Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, we're going to go back and revisit a, an old favorite, uh, which is Yang Cheng Fu's 12 or 13 original postures. And um, this is something that we've, we've done before, and we've done bits and pieces of it in uh, various times during the, uh, these classes. But I want to go over it really deep, each posture, and show what's going on in each movement and do it and kind of put the, the spotlight on, on each individual posture and do it very, very slowly so that uh, we can delve into the mysteries of, of each of these, these things. It's not just memorizing a choreography. We're getting into the the nuts and bolts of why this thing works and and what we're trying to do with it. So uh, for those uh, who have uh, who are just joining us or who have not uh, are not that familiar with with our our format here, where um, uh, the Young Chen Fu's thirteen original postures is a uh, a very short Yang style form that I learned from Young Chen Fu or uh, Young Fu Kui. Uh, my teacher, and uh, uh, he learned it from his grandfather, who learned it, who was a contemporary of uh, of uh, Yang Cheng Yang Cheng Fu, and so it's a uh, it's a, an old posture. It's an old uh, form. Uh, goes back at least uh, I'd say a century, and it uh, it's a short, very short version of the Yang family traditional form. Um, it's something that if you do a, uh, you know, a, a YouTube search for it, you're going to see a lot of different ways that people are doing something with that name for it. This is one I think has some, uh, uh, I guess, you know, some foundation in, in the, in the family. There's a one video that uh, is available on YouTube, which talk, shows that Yang Cheng Fu's grandson, Yang Cheng Do, um, doing the form, uh, very similar to what I'm teaching. Uh, the th thing about it is it's, it's sh short, but you're going to see a lot of variation uh, in, uh, in the way these movements are performed. And I don't do it exactly like my teacher does. He doesn't do it like, actually, I've never seen him do it the same way twice. So it's one of those things that has a lot of, a lot of wiggle room. The important thing about it for me is that it's a such a short form that we can focus on the stuff inside the internal stuff of it that allows us to really bring that out so you're not spending a year learning choreography you're actually able to learn this in a fairly short period of time and you're able to focus more on what each movement is doing and uh, getting into the internal uh, aspects of, of each of these things. So the um, everything that we do in this it kind of is, is comes out of the what, what I call the the three pillars of energetic uh, cultivation and that is energetic coherence which we access very easily just by pointing and reaching with the index fingers and just feeling those fingers as you're reaching out. And that creates a whole whole body state of coherence. That is everything kind of lines up and, and moves into a heightened state of wholeness. Coherence is, a, is, a, uh, is something that is available and is present in any living creature. That means what coherence is is, is how whole you feel so there is a uh, uh if, if you're alive you have some degree of coherence what we're trying to do then is take the energy of that system because what a, a living being does is it traps energy and so that it can mobilize that energy to do work and um so what uh, what we're doing with the uh, coherence is is heightening that we're mobilizing that energy and getting it to move around so that it can do do cool stuff for us. The second principle is 
central equilibrium. That is, we're aligning the body in such a way as to open the connections with the energy of the earth and the energy of the sky, the yin chi of the earth, the yang chi of the heavens. And whenever you get lined up just right, there's a you you get into a resonance with the big chi. And so at that point, you're no longer just playing with the energy within your your skin, but it's you're actually tapping into the vast resources of the universe. And then the third pillar is what I call unkinking the hose. And that is you're, you're learning to circulate the energy and remove the, the impediments to the chi flow by releasing uh, arbitrary muscular contraction and misplaced uh, structure so that your posture is it, when your posture is misplaced, it it tends to kink the hose. That means it prevents the energy from flowing freely. So we do those those things. So everything is is based on those three principles, and that allows us to have ample chi and circulate it really well. And so when we do that, we're able to move into a super conscious state. We're able to move into a heightened state of awareness where there's body, mind, spirit integration. So that's uh, the nickel version of um, you know what it is we're trying to do with these things. And within that, there's a lot of different ways to make those things happen. So we're going to stand up now and uh, start to uh, play around with this. We'll begin with the three pillars, and then we'll get into the, uh, the Yang Cheng Fu. Okay, so um, let's uh, do it from this posture. Quick, bring your heels together, your toes apart. And so your feet form a V. Your knees are unlocked. They're not bent too much, but they're unlocked. And you want to have your weight centered over the balls of your feet now. So when we, we do that, when we center over the balls of the feet, we create a young or expansive energy in the body mind. So we do that. So we're creating this expansiveness. And what that does is it generates more chi in the in the system. We're beginning to mobilize the chi. And now feel the center over the balls of your feet. The whole the whole foot is touching the ground, but the, the balls of the feet are your are the bullseye. Now reach with the crown of your head. So right here at the the top back of your head, not up at the very top, but around the hair whorl that, uh, so you wanna feel that, the posterior fontanelle. So you're reaching up with that. And when you do that, you're opening up the base of the skull there, the area that we call the jade pillow gate. Now there are two acupuncture points there that are actually, uh, I think it's bladder nine that are have the name jade pillow. And that's uh, from an acupuncture standpoint, that's perfectly valid. But from a Qigong standpoint, the jade pillow is this whole area here at the base of the skull. It's where the spine meets the occiput, the, the, that big bone there at the, at the back of your head. So the jade pillow gate, whenever we open it, we allow the energy to move more freely into the brain and the cerebral spinal fluid to flow more freely. And it's a major factor in unkinking the hose where we're uh, allowing for the energy to flow more freely. And so you tuck in your chin and you open the jade pillow gate. And this allows the, 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 the governing vessel and the conception vessel, what's called the, the microcosmic orbit to happen quite naturally. So the energy is flowing in these two very important vessels throughout the system. And you're just allowing that to happen. It's encouraged that you place the tip of your tongue on the roof of your mouth and breathe through the nose. And 
Uh, I'm not going to be able to do that and talk at the same time, but you can you can do that. The um, you want to relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop and allow your coccyx, your tailbone, to drop down, point down toward the ground. So what that does is it it straightens out your hips, allows your allows whereas if your if your butt's kicking out like that, your your hips are pointing forward or they're sloped downward. You want to relax that so that that your hip joint, your hip bones are level. So in doing that, you're lengthening the spine and you're allowing for the energy to flow through the sacrum and through the coccyx so that there's a, a connection there between the legs and the torso. That's where the legs and the torso connect up. And so there is, that, that's one of the primary gates there that we're, we're playing with. And then also lowering your, by relaxing your lower back, then you're also allowing the, there's a, a gate there also in the center of your back that uh, the, uh, the energy has to move through. Then it moves up to the, the jade pillow gate. So just by doing this and feeling weight over the balls of your feet, you're gonna start to feel some movement. You're gonna start to feel some energy in your hands, some tingling, pulsing, I just get get comfortable with that tip of the tongue, the roof of the mouth. I want to release the hip joint, so just spiral down and turn, and just give that just enough to remind your hips to to let go. There, you're unkinking the hose there. Also, reaching out a little bit with the elbow, so your your arms instead of collapse like this. They're just slightly rounded, not like that. You're not, there's no shoulder tension. There's just, oh, they're just reaching out a little bit. And what that does is it, it unkinks the hose in the shoulder joints. So we're getting the elbow chin. We're reaching that, that elbow gate is open and it allows, also opens the shoulder gates. So the energy is flowing more freely now and we're tapped into the big chi. So we're able to connect up. You're pointing with the index fingers so that you're feeling that energetic coherence. So this is our this is our our default setting. Our, our this is where we want to start having this this feeling of being connected up energetically with the earth and the sky, the big chi of the universe within the body mind itself. You want to feel that that energetic coherence. That is, the whole system is in, moving into a heightened state of wholeness. And also the chi is flowing because we're removing the major impediments, primarily at the hip joints, at the, um, at the jade pillow gate, and at the shoulders. When we do that, then the chi flows much more freely. And so we want to maintain this through each of the movements we're gonna we're gonna do in the in the form. So everything kind of is moving around that. So when we um, now to begin the form, the we begin with the, the preparation, and that is we want to do what I call the most important move in any Taiji form, and that is the opening. That is how do I go from this neutral, empty posture and take one step? And how do I get that and do that without kinking the hose, without undoing all this beautiful work that we, I've done in the preparation, in the, uh, into, uh, the, the setup here, in the three, pill the, the three pillars. We do that by feeling the ball of the right foot so I'll be doing this turning around so you can follow me that way, but uh, I just want to do it facing you just so you get the, you can see exactly what's happening with the front of my body first. So feel the, feel the ball of my, your right foot and uh, actually first feel the balls of both feet. You want to get it so, so that you're feeling that the sense that the, uh, the weight is evenly distributed between the two. So 
when we're, what we're going to do now is to make the right leg more substantial. That is, it's going to become the dominant leg in the conversation, at least for this part of the conversation. And to do that, we're going to shift from having our attention on both balls, of, uh, the balls of both feet, to now the ball of the right foot. So we want to feel that. And so just by changing our mind, just by bringing our awareness from both to the right foot, we start to create substantiality in the right leg. That is, we're bringing more emphasis, being more, more substance to that right, right leg. So just feeling that begins the process of, of creating a more, the, the right leg is going to become the weight-bearing leg. So now we want to spiral down to the left. So you're going to release your hip joint and spiral down to the left. So you're turning your body, but not just rotating it. You're also spiraling down. That is your twisting down without moving your knee. So notice what I'm not doing is I'm not pushing my body out to the side so that I can, I can make a step out like that. I'm spiraling down. So I'm drilling into the ground. I'm turning and drilling down into the ground. So now I've got moved from 50-50 to about 70% in my right leg. So here I am, I'm, I'm really focused on this. And I spent a lot of time talking about this and, and, and doing this particular movement because it, it really is the most important thing. If you can't do it in this, in this setup with where, this setup where you're, you're in a neutral posture, it's going to be very difficult to execute these mechanics whenever you are in a much more complicated pose. So as we're doing, we're spiraling down to the left and we're feeling into that, that right leg. So even though I'm spiraling down to the left, all my weight is in my right leg. Because what that does is that opens up the hip joint. That says, that initiates the process. I'm spiraling left so that I can turn to the right. So now that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn to the right. And as I do that, I'm still in that, that right leg. And notice my butt has not, has not moved out to the side at all. It's just turning as I'm moving. And that is emptying out my left foot almost completely. I've got about 90% of my weight in my right leg now, just by that simple motion there. I've gone from 50-50 to 70-30 right foot to 90, 10, without much effort at all. So now here I am, I'm really located. This is where I'm looking for my central equilibrium again. So bear with me as I really break this down and, and talk about all the nuts and bolts of this thing, because this is stuff that will be in, uh, in each of the movements. You're gonna find the same principles are expressed in each of the movements in various and more complex patterns. So here I am, I've turned and I've loaded up my right leg. My heel comes up. I've got about 95% in my, in my right leg now. So I'm just lightly on the toe of my left foot so that I'm really getting comfortable being single weighted. That is, I'm having my weight on that right leg and starting to feel comfortable with the support of that, that leg. It's, I'm developing confidence that I can hold my body uh, erect with only the, the one leg to, to do the work. So now I'm going to go from 95%, I'm gonna pick up my left foot and I'm gonna to go to 100% and I'm gonna step out. So I've gone very briefly, I've gone from 95 to 100, to stepping out and back to about 90 in the right foot. When I step out, my toes are pointing straight forward. My big toe is pointing straight forward as I do that. Back up here a little bit. So 
still about 90% of my right leg at this point. So notice it's something that whenever I'm actually doing the form, it takes me about a second to do. And we're doing this for several minutes now. The point is to really understand the mechanics of this so that it can be replicated in any situation. So here I am, I've got, I'm shifting, I'm, my right leg has been substantial. My left leg has been insubstantial. I'm going to change that now. I'm going to feel the ball of my left foot. And just by doing that, just by bringing my awareness to my left foot, I'm starting the process of creating more substantiality in my left leg. And now I'm going to set the knee and spiral down to the right. So as I do that, I'm loading up into my left leg now. And I take it to about 50%. about 50% of my left leg. And I'm just starting to feel this. The, so the game has changed dramatically. I've gone from substantial my right leg to substantial my left leg. I still want that central equilibrium. Notice that my butt has, has not pushed out to the side at all. And there's no lateral movement of my, my hip. Everything's happening by releasing and spiraling down into that left leg. So now I'm going to turn. And I'm going to turn by activating my left foot. Since it's a substantial foot, I'm going to pivot on the heel of my right foot. As I do that, so my whole body is going to turn so that I'm facing forward. So that my feet, both feet are pointing forward. The big toes are pointing directly forward as I do this. And I'm back to 50-50. I'm feeling the balls of both feet. So that's, I'm very active here. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go from very young, very expansive, and sink into my heels. And allow everything to sink down, 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 get very sung. So everything is allowed to release downward, except my, the crown of my head, that's reaching upward. It's extending upward and lengthening my neck. Chin is tucked in and I'm opening the jade pillow gate. Even as I'm reaching down in through my feet and into the earth. So I've gone from the expansiveness of yang to now settling down in and releasing down into the yin. Allowing the energy, which is going up, up, up and out. To now go down, 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 and in. And just feel into that. Feel into your hands. Feel into your arms. Feel the connection throughout the whole body-mind. And consciously reach with that crown. Tuck in the chin and really feel the jade pillow gate opening up. And notice the effect that has on the energy throughout your whole body. Now feel the balls of your, your feet. You're going to shift. So you're going into the balls now from the heels. So we're going to begin another yang phase here. And here you want to reach with your wrists. And doing so, your, your fingers are going to hang as you do that. You're actually reaching down with the fingers as you, as you reach up with the, with the wrists. And very slowly, very deliberately, you're reaching with your wrists. Notice that your elbows, as you're reaching, your elbows stay down. They're, they're lower, and they're being dragged along by the wrists. The elbows. And what this is doing is it is causing the shoulder to get very, very relaxed very soon as you do this, as you're coming up. 
And just feel the weight of your arms as you do this. Reach with the wrists. When you get up to about chest height, they're going to reach out with the fingers and open. And as you reach out with the fingers, you feel your arms pulling forward and opening up the space between your shoulder blades. Feel your spine. Feel that gap there between the shoulder blades, which is where one of those gates is that allows the energy to move up the spine from the sacrum up to the jade pillow gate. So as you open up that, that space there, you're creating more, uh, more chi flow in your, um, in your do channel, your uh, uh, governing channel. So just feel into that. So you're in, you're, we're back into this expansive state. So everything is opening. Your joints are all opening. Your shoulders are, are relaxed. They're opening. Elbows are reaching out. Wrists are reaching out. Fingers are reaching out. And there's this expansion. And now we're going to go into the heels. And ah, now you reach down with your elbows. So we're going yin. Everything is dissolving into the yin. And as you do this, you lift your fingers, you bend the wrists like this. As your, as your hands come down, your fingers come up, reaching down with the elbows, down with the wrists. You're in your heels now. And pause here with the, with the wrists bent. And notice the chi that is, is being generated and is, is being uh, stored in your hands as you do this. You're kind of creating this little reservoir of chi in your hands. And then point down and reach down with the fingers and let that go. And just sink into the emptiness that comes with this. So we've what we've done is we've created this bellows effect by going from yang to yin to yang to yin and back to yang as we reach down and open up. But now we're into more of a neutral state where yang and yin merge. And we have dissolved that. We've gone into the taiji, which is where the yin and yang disappear as separate qualities. And they become yin yang. There is a, there's a oneness there that, that pervades the whole system. But, but nothing gets done in this state. So we have to separate the yin and the yang in order to go forward. So what I'd like to do now is go through that same sequence again, this time focusing on the breath and having that as a component in the uh, and this yin-yang dance we're doing. To do that, I'm going to turn around and uh, look, you can follow from behind this time. So we're going to establish your three pillars. Feel the balls of your feet. Reach with the crown of your head. Relax your lower back. Allow your, your sacrum to drop. Your, your coccyx. Knees are unlocked. Your weight is over the balls of your feet. Tuck in your chin. Reach with your elbows. And point with your index fingers. And relax your hip joints. Release any tension there. So now, as first thing we're going to do is we're going to inhale as as uh, we inhale on the yang. So we go into the balls of the feet and inhale, and you're feeling the ball of your right foot 
spiraling down to the left, turn to the right. And then go to your heel, your right heel, and exhale. So yin. So emptying out the left leg so that your heel comes up, you have about 95% of your weight in your right foot. And now we're going to go into the ball of the foot, the right foot, inhale, pick up the left foot and step out, and then heel and exhale and feel into the heel, sink into that, spiral down to the right, loading up the left leg as it becomes more substantial, exhale, and then feel the ball of your left foot and inhale and turn, young. So here we are, we're in this expansive state again. Now, go to the heels and exhale. In. Now into the balls of your feet, inhale, reach with the wrists. Fingers are hanging. Inhale, yang, reach with the fingers. Open your back, open your shoulder blades. Yang, expansion. And now heels and exhale. Yin, elbows down. Wrist down, bend your wrists. Fingers are up. Now ball to your feet and inhale, reach down. Open. And into your heels and uh, exhale, relax. And feel into the Taiji. Feel the fullness of the posture, the wholeness where it's a, a the whole system is, is energized, very full. But there's, it's both yin and yang at this point. So one more time, step in. Okay, feel your three pillars. Now feel the ball of your right foot, set your right knee, spiral down to the left, inhale. Feel, turn, exhale. Up your left heel, ball of the foot, inhale and step. Left heel, exhale, sink, spiral down to the right. Ball of the left foot, inhale, yang, turn, building up, heels, exhale, yin. Ball of the both feet. Set the knees. Inhale, reach with the wrists. Reach with the fingers. Open, shoulder blades. Open, shoulders, everything. Heel, exhale, yin. Elbows down, wrists down, fingers down. Balls of the feet, inhale, reach down. Open, and then heels, sink. Reaching with the crown, everything else is sun. Feel the taiji. Good, okay. Um, any, let's see, is there what time we got? Yeah. Oh, good. We got time. Let's take a moment and just see if there's any comments before we go further. Grab a seat. Uh, quickly, any questions or comments? Any corrections that he got? Um, so when you, like when you're in your heels and you go into the 
or if you're in the heels and you go to the ball, or ball and you go into the heel, are you physically are you physically moving backwards and forwards, or is it more yes. of a yes, yes, you're actually physically but, moving? But it's, it's but it's very subtle. But there's there, there definitely a, a, a there's definitely a shift. You're you're shifting the your the weight from the balls of the feet to the heels, and vice versa. So there is a it's you know it's a minute shift, but there is a there's a definite physical shift. There's a visible shift. Uh, yes. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, what yes, you please. So, so. Here I am. So let's say I'm going into the balls of my feet. Open. And then heels. Mm. Balls. Heels. Is that perceptible? Uh, it's it's yeah it's it's more than perceptible it's it's um I would say you're moving at least four inches. Good. So that uh, yeah, that's about right. Okay, and that's you, all. You, you can do less. Depends on on what you. I, I did it enough so that you could, you know, you can see it. Uh, you know, I might do it less, but the important thing is that you, you want to engage your body in such a way as to be able to feel that shift, the shift and flow from yin to yang. Is it going up and out? Is it coming down and in? And that's going to, uh, you're going to be able to fine tune that in your own posture. So I feel that I can do that without really much of a physical movement. I don't Good. think there's hardly any, that's, that's why I asked. Uh, I'm sure you can. Okay. Uh, but it's something that, I think it uh, there is uh, some advantage to 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 the movement. Cool. Anybody else? Jonathan, coming back at the end of the opening move into the left, it maybe this is display uh, misplaced uh, symmetry on my part, but it would seem you might want to load up the left leg as much as you were loading up the right leg when you began. Is that? Not the case because you have the opportunity to do it as you're, you know, because you're you're spiraling down to the right and loading up there and then coming in just like we did with the right foot. So, but you didn't seem to emphasize that. Uh, no, and uh, it's not something I would uh, I would recommend. It certainly can be done, but I wouldn't recommend it. You know, it just I, I think it's more the. Uh, uh, the parsimony of it all just you you want to you want to keep it economical so if we mm -hmm. we look at it you know but give me a full screen okay so if i'm if i'm doing it this is this is what it looks like whenever i'm doing doing a form mm. it's it's very economical if i were to do what you're saying if i go like this boom i'm going boom like this i step out I go boom, boom, and now I have to go back here and do. I I have to do something, add an additional step, which can be done certainly, but it uh, to me it's an unnecessary uh, addendum, an unnecessary embellishment to the. Uh, uh, there's no uh, I I see no advantage to doing it. Okay, I mean as you know I I love doing this move. I do it all day instead of. Instead of standing, I do this. <laughs> you know, it's it's, it's, uh, it's practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so but I appreciate yeah, what, what you were saying about it. I mean, it's really important that that if you don't have this, nothing else will may follow right. I mean, this is where you 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 learn how to move basically in this first move, right? Right. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Cool. Anybody else? All right. Let's uh, let's do the next move. Or do you want to go through? I want to. Get, we're, we're good. Next move. Producer says next move. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now 
the next move is cloud hands or wave hands like clouds. And the idea here is we're, we're doing this. We're going back and forth like that. So the, uh, but how do we get there and how do we make it work? How do we make it? We don't want just the arm just kind of floating like that. We want there to be some gin or some internal power that comes with each of these movements. So in this one, we're going to start by feeling the ball of the left foot. And so we're loading up, we're making the left leg substantial by spiraling down to the right. So since I'm turning to the left, I want to first spiral down to the right and load up. Because now I'm going to turn to my left. And as I do that, my right hand comes along and reaches out. So here I am like this. I spiral down to the left and both arms are relaxed but reaching. They're both active and the right hand becomes young. That is, it's extending. It's the one that is reaching up and out and the left hand is reaching down. So I'm getting this, so I'm creating this circuit. I have these, these, two, these two poles in opposition and they, they start off like this in opposition but now they're going to change and I'm going to turn and reach out. So by reaching out, I'm opening up the shoulder joint, opening up the, the arm and turning the body. The left arm is reaching down. So now I'm gonna feel the ball of the right foot and set the right knee and shift into the heel of the right foot. So I'm loading up that right foot in yin. And as I turn, whole body turns and my left hand comes along for the ride now too. It's gone from reaching down to starting to cross. They cross my center line at about the same time and continue to turn. The whole body turning. Notice my central equilibrium remains intact. I'm reaching out now with both arms. My right arm is going out farther than my left, but they're parallel. So they're parallel, you know, they're lined up like that, but they're also lined up like this. So they're not crossed or they're not going up and down. They're, they're oh, they're moving together like that. Elbows are dropped, fingers are reaching out. And so now you're feeling the right arm is reaching, it's yang. The left hand is going from yin to yang. Right hand is going from yang to yin. So there's gonna be this crossover as we, as we go through this. So now I'm going to feel the ball of my left foot, set the left knee and then shift into the heel of my left foot as I turn. And now my right hand, which was young, is now going down. It's becoming yin. And left hand is becoming yang as it goes across. And notice as I go across, I'm not just reaching with the hand. I'm actually reaching with the elbow. And the elbow is pulling my hand across. So in my right hand, it's coming down. And it's not. What, what's happening is I'm actually reaching with my wrist as I come across and my elbow sets and then the arm opens, my right elbow sets and my arm opens and here I am reaching out on the left side now. So here we go, start over again. So we go, so left ball, uh, let's actually just, just just go right into the left heel. Forget the ball. That's an unnecessary addendum. There. So left heel, set the knee and spiral down to the right, and then turn to the left. 
and we go from from the whatever we reach uh, across the center line, we turn from yin to yang and we reach out. So that becomes yang. We're in the ball now. And now we're going to do the right heel. That the right knee is spiraling down to the left. And now we're going to turn to the right. In the heel, yin, as we turn. We get to the center line. That is the center of my body here. And now we go to the ball of the foot and it becomes yang. The right arm is yang. Left hand is going from yin to yang. Right hand is going from yang to yin. And now we feel the left heel spiral down to the right and turn. Left hand is yang. Right hand is yin. Left elbow is reaching. Now ball of the left foot and reach. Yang. Open. So there's this expansion. Right heel. Set the right knee and spiral down to the left. And turn. Yin. Yin. Reach with the right elbow. And turn and reach. Yeah, into the ball of the foot. Yang. Expansion. And open. Just hold that. You just want to feel that extension there. You're opening both shoulders, your elbows, reaching with the fingers, reaching with the crown, sinking into the right leg. So you've got most of your weight in that right leg and you're feeling that substantiality. We're in a yang posture, so we're in the ball of the foot. We're inhaling it at that in the yang. Now we're going to we're going to make a step now. So you feel the the heel of the right foot. You set the right knee and spiral down to the right. You're loading up that right claw and picking up the left heel. So there's we're sinking into that right leg so that we have all our support, all the support we need so that we can make this empty step out with the left foot. Nice wide step. Still reaching out with the, with the hands. Still loaded up in that right leg. Feel into that. Feel the power of this. It looks like it should be awkward, but it's not. It's a very powerful posture. Why? Because we have our three pillars engaged. We're reaching out. We have this very expansive structure. And now we're going to feel the heel of the left foot, and we're going to go yin. Set the left knee, spiral down to the right, and then turn, yin, yin, yin. Reaching with the left elbow. And the right hand going from yin to yang, and reaching out, opening, and step in with the right foot. So that is our cloud hands part there. Cloud hands movement. Let's do it. I'll do it with my back facing you. So here we are. So feel the heel of your left foot. Set the left knee and spiral down to the right. So you're loading up that left leg and turn to the right. As you turn, your right hand, you go into the ball of your foot now, as you cross the center line, inhale, reach out with the right hand. Feel that extension, feel that expansion. You're loading up that left leg. Keep your central equilibrium. So now you're gonna feel the right heel. Set the right knee and spiral down to the left. You're loading up the right claw now. Yin, yin, as you're turning, reach with that right elbow. Turn, the whole body turns as a unit. The left hand goes from yin to yang as we turn. You can get to the ball of your foot as you're reaching, expanding, inhaling. Left heel, yin, exhale, and spiral right and turn. You're turning, the whole body turns from the waist 
And now go to the ball of your foot. Inhale and reach. Open. Feel that expansion. Yang. Right heel. Yin. Spiral down to the left and turn. Reach with your right elbow. Inhale. Yang. Ball of your foot. Reach. Left heel, actually feel the, the heel of your right foot and spiral down to the right. Pick up the left heel and step out. Left heel, spiral down to the right. You're into your left leg now and turn. As you're turning, reach with the uh, exhale, reach with the elbow. Now inhale into the ball of your foot. Reaching, 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 opening, and step in. Uh, and turn back to center. Hands come down. Step in. Take a deep breath. Inhale. And Exhale, close, empty out, sink into your heels, yin. Very empty out, feel into the emptiness. Wait. Yes. Can you do that move once facing us without talking, just going through it? Sure. All right. One. One time, uh, I'm going to take it from the top. So one time without talking, just for uh, just for grins here. So here we go. Thank you. Okay. Right. Grab a seat, please. How was that? Good, 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 good. Okay. Just the right amount of detail, too much, too little. Scott. So the first one was, you know, you did it as a meditation. The second one, you just kind of, it was more of a form lesson, right? I did this. I, uh, you're, you're right. Yeah, because you're, right, you're, right. you're rushing it because you're trying to get to it, right? Uh, all right, time was 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 getting short, so I uh, I didn't take as much time. But also um, goes back to the idea of the first one is the most important move, mm -hmm. and and it spending that extra time in that because it establishes the foundation that we can then play with. You know, we we've, we've already introduced the key ideas there, and so now we can kind of move forward and and. Uh, and use that in a more of a shorthand kind of way. 
You had something there, Richard? No, okay, cool. So, uh, oh. did, that doesn't need more, uh, more of a. I would, I would have, I would have liked to spend more time on the second one. I mean, I know you didn't have, we didn't have time tonight, but I mean, okay. I, I would like to do each move the way you did the first one, personally. But that's okay. just me. Well, that 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 I'll. Uh, well, we can we can do that for uh, part of the, uh, the the next session. We can get uh, we can do that and and do more of a meditation there because you're right. It is it's something. And, you know, we do it uh, that that certain way for the form, but it's one of those things you can do back and forth all day that that cloud hands, you know, you can you can just yeah. keep that keep that going back and forth and uh, uh, to considerable advantage. You know, it's a it's a very powerful thing and and being able to identify the different phases and what they're doing. It's in the, so we're not just repeating this choreography. We're we're actually working the bellows. We're we're generating energy by pumping the the, the system. So the uh, uh, the whole system gets to be uh, uh, gets to gets to work up. Yes, Valerie. Um, what I appreciated was when we're doing wave hands. Uh, you know, talking and emphasizing how. You know, you're reaching with um, the elbow and then coming in with the wrist. I hadn't gotten that. I hadn't gotten the wrist part on the lower hand. So I really appreciated that. Thank you. You're welcome. That's you're right. It's something that is very seldom mentioned. You know, the wrist and and and, and the form, what that actually means, and and it um, it's. It's really important as a focal point in in the movements how you how that uh, it leads the whole structure and uh, it changes the the body dynamics by doing that. Great, Jonathan. It does seem also a much richer uh, form than the original, uh, you know, uh, William Chen's form, the cloud hands, than this one. I mean, it's just so elaborated. You can really see doing this all day. Not not just not just it, but it's uh, uh, just about every cloud hands I've seen. It yeah, tends yeah, to yeah. be kind of you know this kind of thing that uh, it 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 doesn't really have a lot of juice and right. And I think it 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 deserves its it deserves its juice. It deserves to to you know to be a. A, a a major player in 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 the gin category. Right. So uh, you know, this is my way of articulating yeah. a uh, how to bring gin into you know, that simple movement. Yeah, we're just not cloud waving here, you know. <laughs> we're, we're doing a lot. More. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, Richard. I, think, I, I was just going to say, I think it has an unfortunate name. <laughs> yes, we're not we're not waving hands it, like it, it, it lead it. It's sort of like push, right? It's like right, 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 right. <laughs> it, it, It's unfortunately made because that's not what we're doing at all, folks. You know, but it. Uh, um, yes, <laughs> you're right. It is that. That's good. Good point there. It is uh, bad marketing. So, <laughs> uh, great. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you for, so much for your thank comments. You. And uh, it's been it's been a lot of fun. And thank you, uh, thank you Maria.